So beware spoilers in this review, people. If you haven't watched the episode, I suggest you step outside and come back. But here we are at episode five of Star Trek Picard. And did this episode boldly take us where Star Trek hasn't taken us before? Or is there a kind of repetitive nature of the storytelling? Let's talk about it and let's find out. <laughs> So welcome back to the channel everyone and welcome to my review, my weekly review of Star Trek Picard. Here we are at episode 5. This episode is entitled Imposters. Now as you know at the end of the last episode um, the Titan managed to escape the clutches of the Shriek um, and its commander and the ship is based now at the edge of the Alpha Quadrant and it is getting repairs. Um, Jack Crusher um, we open with like a dream sequence of his, it's obviously a dream sequence, he's in a Starfleet uniform on the bridge and he kills the bridge crew um, and he hears voices and this sort of a thing, sort of calling him home so to speak and he awakens from this dream, it's clearly a dream anyway, um, so what's going on with him? We're yet to find out. But anyway, so as this episode progresses, the ship's there. It's getting some of its repairs done before it can limp home to Starfleet. Only Starfleet have been contacted because Picard and Riker are going to have to stand up to what they've done and answer for, for, for their actions. Um, the captain of the Titan, sure, he's already contacted Starfleet. And we get this scene where... He's sort of overjoyed by the fact that Starfleet are on their way and that these two are going to have to face music for, for their crimes. Um, now, the writing for Shaw at this point, I like Captain Shaw as a character. I think he's great. However, I don't think the writing's very good because they keep flitting from you're a dick to a giving you this redemption. Um, they've done this a couple of times now. When you first met him, he was a bit of a, bit of a, a you know, a, um, a dick shall we say and then he redeemed himself um, became a dick again he redeemed himself again and this was that scene in the um, like engineering where Seven killed the fake LaForge um, and now he's reverted back to being a dick again um, but the character I enjoy um, other stuff that's been going on in this episode um, we get a surprise visitor. We get a surprise visitor to the ship, and it's Ro Laren. Yes, Ro Laren has returned, um, with Michelle Forbes returning in the role. Now, we haven't seen Ro Laren since, oh, God knows how long back, so it's fantastic to get this character back, and she has some fantastic scenes with Patrick Stewart, and they kind of clear the air, and they come to an understanding, and... I, we knew that this series, I said at the beginning that this series would have certain character sacrifices in it, certain character deaths, and unfortunately we do lose Ro Laren, Michelle Forbes' character. But it was a shock and a great surprise to see her back. Um, and, and then, you know, it's a shame because it would have been nice to have explored her in Star Trek previously in some time but it's really nice to get a bit of closure for this character here um, I thought it was fantastic and she plays the part um, you know and she does help to move the narrative of the story forward which is great a great great piece she's not just thrown in for any little reason then sacrifice and dies there's a reason for it which is great Wolf and Raffi we jump to them um uh, and they're sparring Wolf's always sparring with someone isn't he and they decide to go off and find the person that's actually in the criminal underworld above the Ferengi that Wolf beheaded and they find a um, a Vulcan a Vulcan crime lord now I like this I really did like this 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 character I thought he was great um I thought the idea of having this crime lord Vulcan was fantastic and I liked his logic 
as to why a Vulcan is a crime lord, because you can't have a peaceful society like the Vulcans if crime doesn't exist. So logically, it makes sense for there to be this element within the Vulcans. And, and I thought that was just fantastic, fantastic piece of writing. What a fantastic character. And Raffi and Worf are forced to duel for real, and it looks like Worf has died, but obviously we know that's not the case. Um, they wouldn't kill him like that in such an unceremonious manner and so quick. Um, yeah, fantastic stuff. We come to learn that, you know, that, that Ro Laren was actually the handler of Worf. Um, and this connects Wolf to the main storyline with Picard and Riker and then returning back together. A lot goes on in this episode. We come to find out that the, the changelings themselves have, have um, evolved to the point that they can actually alter their internal systems, their, their internals to create human um, blood, to create human um body parts within and all this organs and this sort of stuff and, and a, a great sort of step forward for them as well um i honestly think this is probably the best episode of this series thus far um like i said it, it does do some stuff wrong in the writing like i said with with captain shaw um there's this sense of slowing things down um, to fit other things in, to to to, to just stretch the, the the story out over its its course of the series. But um, I think this is the episode where the most has happened, the most reveals, the most shocks have occurred. Um, yeah, for me, this was this was a strong strong episode. It looked fantastic. It offers us some fantastic special effects. Um, the mystery is still there. Um, revolving around Jack and what's going on with him because he he does have a turn like he's been I don't know has he been I don't know mind manipulated or something like that has he been sort of trained behind closed doors to be some sort of a a a, a, a killer um someone who who doesn't know that they are but then switches to being and comes back from being it that sort of a thing and we just don't know yet but i'm looking forward to where this is going um riker himself in this episode was pushed more to the background he didn't have too much to do um like i said beverly did do a little bit of doctor stuff but there are some there was some niggling points in the writing that i noticed two or three times in this episode where there was a repetitive nature of what was being said like when when the other Starfleet vessel turns up, it's announced that this Starfleet vessel has turned up and then you cut to a scene of Seven saying, um, Captain, this Starfleet vessel is there, naming the star. It's like this repetitive nature. If it tells you once, it has to tell you twice in the next scene, exactly the same thing. Um, a bit of poor writing there. Um, in my opinion but there we go it's just mine so i'm sure this episode has, has pleased a lot of people i'm sure this episode will be um, talked about extensively um especially with ro laren returning fantastic to see michelle forbes again what can i say about that um a lot of good stuff here a lot of good stuff so let me know your thoughts down in the comments down below your th you know what you thought of this episode of star trek picard it's still going around in my head because literally i've just stepped away from watching it to come and talk about it um but yeah superb let me know the comments are always open come in comment i do reply to comments get a great chat going um whether you liked it disliked it you know we can have a friendly conversation either way um that's what i'm all about this is aj thanks for watching i'll see you on i'll see you next week yes with episode six um can't wait